Welcome back to The Basement. I'm Steve Lewis. Today we continue with our look at Carl Wilson guest appearances on other people's records. We're up to the early 90s now, but before we continue, I need to back up for a 1980s Carl Wilson guest appearance that I missed and only recently learned about. It's on Bob Welch's Eye Contact album, which was released in June 1983, just a few months after Carl Wilson's second solo album, Youngblood, which was released in February 1983. Ideally, this would have come in part six of this series, Between Another Page by Christopher Cross, released in January 1983, and Heart by Burton Cummings, released in 1984. Luckily, this was an easy and inexpensive album to track down. Bob Welch, of course, was a member of Fleetwood Mac from 1971 to 1974, beginning with the album Future Games and ending with Heroes Are Hard to Find, leaving just ahead of their imperial phase with Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks. He was best known for his big success in the late 70s with the French Kiss album, which produced three top 40 singles, including the number eight hit Sentimental Lady and the number 14 Ebony Eyes in late 1977 and early 1978. The French Kiss album went to number 12. Sentimental Lady was a re-recording of a song he had originally done on Fleetwood Mac's Bear Trees album in 1972. He'd reached the top 40 on the singles chart one more time in 1979 with Precious Love from his second album, Three Hearts. By the time of his sixth album, Eye Contact, in 1983, the hits were behind him. Like so many of his contemporaries at this time, Eye Contact has Bob Welch struggling to keep up with the changing times. The image of the TV on the cover has a vaguely new wave look to it, and there are some decidedly new wave synthesizer sounds on the album. Unlike some of his peers, Welch doesn't overdo it with the modern sounds and delivers a solid, if unspectacular, album. The album was recorded at Cherokee Studios in Los Angeles, the same studio where Carl did much of the work on his album Youngblood. Like Youngblood, Eye Contact was produced by Jeff Skunk Baxter. With both Carl and his collaborator on his solo albums, Myrna Smith Schilling credited, I'm guessing Carl's appearance was recorded during the Youngblood sessions. Also, as you've no doubt noticed, Al Jardine is also credited on backing vocals. Also credited are Tommy Funderburg, who has an extensive history as a writer and performer of gospel, soul, and rock music, Paulette McWilliams, a vocalist with a long session career and an early member of Rufus, and Van Redding, also known as Van Rawls, Ross Redding, a member of the group Pyramid, who also did a lot of vocal session work. The album liner notes only give general credits. From the reading I've done elsewhere, it appears that Carl, Al, and Myrna are on the second to last track on the album, Love on the Line. The group vocals on the chorus are backing vocals in the most direct sense possible. They just sing along with Bob Welch's lead. I have no doubt that Carl, Al, and Myrna are in there, but I haven't been able to pick out Carl, Al, or Myrna in the group. There are backing vocals on other tracks on the album. It's my understanding that Carl and Al are only on Love on the Line, though since I can't distinctly hear them, it's possible they're on another track or two, and I wouldn't know it. Eye Contact failed to chart. Bob Welch passed away in 2012. Getting back to the 1990s, we left off last time with Carl's appearance on Carney and Wendy Wilson's Hey Santa album in 1993. Carl next appears on America's Hourglass album released May 17, 1994. It's Carl's third appearance on an America album after Hat Trick in 1973 and View from the Ground in 1982. This was America's first new album in 10 years. Carl contributes backing vocals on five of the album's 12 tracks. He's on Young Moon, which is the album's opening track and the A-side of the album's first single. It has a very nice, very 90s electronic sheen to it and opens with a slow, ethereal introduction before transitioning into a nice pop tune with a vocal that sounds very much like America of the 1970s. It's a song that probably could have been a hit for them in their 70s heyday. Dewey Bennell sings lead on this one with backing vocals from Jerry Beckley and Carl. The backing vocals are limited to singing along on the choruses and on a verse that comes late in the song and isn't listed in the lyric booklet. You can hear the extra voices there, but with them all singing the same part, I don't specifically hear Carl or Jerry. 
With nobody paying any particular attention to America in the 90s, the single didn't chart in the U.S. It did go to number 79 in Germany. It's kind of a shame because it's actually a quite good, really appealing, pleasant pop song. Track 4, Mirror to Mirror, is more of a rocker as America's rockers go, with prominent lead guitar licks. This time it's Jerry on lead vocals with Dewey and Carl on backing vocals. There are a few faint oohs and ahs in some of the verses. Apart from that, once again, the backing vocals are pretty limited to singing along on the chorus, particularly on the mirror to mirror refrain. And again, I can't specifically hear Carl in the mix. Track five, Garden of Peace, is slower and more melodic with some nice acoustic guitar flourishes and again, a very enjoyable 90s sound. It's Dewey on lead here and Dewey and Carl on backing vocals. Carl is a little easier to hear in parts of the background vocal on this one. What's more, Carl sings lead solo on the section that goes, Inside this world it's beautiful, peace in the garden has come true. This is one place on the album where you can really hear Carl perform. In fact, of all the records in this episode, it's the one place where you're really going to have no trouble hearing Carl. Carl is also on track six, Call of the Wild, which was released as the B-side of the Young Moon single. It starts with an acoustic guitar and an arrangement much closer to America in the 70s. Drums come in halfway through and the track picks up tempo, which is a nice effect. Apart from the 90s style guitar solo, this just about could be an outtake from their mid-70s albums like Holiday or Hearts. Jerry sings lead with Jerry, Dewey, and Carl on backing vocals. Like the earlier tracks, there's clearly a group vocal on the chorus, but I can't really pick Carl out of the mix. Carl's final appearance on the album comes on track 10, the reggae-flavored Ports of Call. The lead vocal is by Jerry with Jerry, Dewey, and Carl on backing vocals. Carl can be heard pretty clearly on this one, too. He sings along on the Ports of Call, Ports of Call part. In this case, you can really hear him in the mix. You can also pick him out in the ahs and the backing on the choruses. Overall, Hourglass is a really strong album from America with lots of excellent songs, and while the arrangement and production now sound very much of their time, the 90s sound is enjoyable and doesn't overwhelm the fact that you're listening to an America album. The effect is undermined a little bit by them closing with re-recordings of two earlier America tracks. Dan Peake's Everyone I Meet is from California was the B-side of their first single, A Horse With No Name, in 1972. I don't mind them revisiting this so much since it's an obscure track and their 1994 arrangement is a marked improvement on the original. Worse is an unnecessary re-recording of You Can Do Magic that ends the album. It's very close to the original hit version and seems like it was included to sort of hedge their bets against potential lack of interest in their new material. The album didn't chart in the U.S. I can understand that in the mid-90s, nobody was really paying much attention to America a dozen years after their last major hit, so I can really understand how this got lost in the shuffle of new album releases. It's really a shame, though, because this is really a pretty good album. Of course, this won't be Carl's last appearance with America or with Jerry Beckley. More about that in a few minutes. A more surprising appearance came on November 1st, 1994, with the release of Tom Petty's Wildflowers album. Carl provides backing vocals on the track Honey Bee. Years ago, I read a review somewhere that said an ironic problem for Tom Petty was that he was so consistently good that nearly every record he made was four or four and a half stars, but he never quite made that landmark five-star album that stood apart from all the others. I thought that was very insightful. I think the reason he doesn't come up more often or higher on listings of the greatest albums of all time is that a vote for a best Tom Petty album could go so many ways. By anybody's ranking, though, I think Wildflowers would be near the top. It's the second album credited to just Tom Petty rather than Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, the first being 1989's Full Moon Fever, another reasonable contender for his best. On Wildflowers, Petty swapped out fellow traveling Wilbury Jeff Lynn, who had produced his recent albums, for producer Rick Rubin and a slightly more stripped-down, back-to-basic sound. He doesn't stray too far into unfamiliar territory. He sounds a little more like Neil Young on some of the tracks. Like Neil Young, he covers a lot of ground. Heavy rockers, acoustic ballads, 60s-sounding rock, love songs, and laments. It all still fits pretty comfortably into the Tom Petty wheelhouse, though, and always sounds authentically like Tom Petty. 
Honey Bee is a heavy rocker with some blues overtones and references to both Muddy Waters' Honey Bee and Slim Harpo's I'm a King Bee. Mainly, it's an opportunity for Petty and Mike Campbell to rock out on electric guitars. Of all the tracks on Wildflowers, I don't know why you'd use Carl Wilson on this one. The backing vocal consists entirely of ahs behind the two choruses. It sounds fine and appropriate for the song, but even I could have done that. It seems like Carl could have been put to much better use as a background vocalist on practically any other track on the album. This is one of the best albums Carl ever appeared on outside the Beach Boys. Unfortunately, his appearance is so slight as to just rank as a footnote or a bit of trivia. Carl next appeared with Robert Lamb of Chicago as a backing vocalist on the track Kiss of Life from Jerry Beckley's album Van Gogan, released September 25th, 1995. It's kind of hard to believe that 25 years or so into his career as part of America, this was Jerry Beckley's first solo album. I suppose with only one or two other members in America over the years, he didn't feel too restricted by the group format. The album seems to have been released in the U.S. and Japan only in 1995. The copy I got happens to be from Japan. I got it by mail from Japan secondhand, but it was a new sealed copy in plastic for some reason, it smells unbelievably of cigarettes. That's just my particular copy. I'd love to know what kind of conditions this thing was stored in to infuse it so much with that smell that would last for years right through the plastic. Anyway, as for the contents, it's what you'd expect from Jerry Beckley. It's well-crafted, nicely produced, pleasant pop rock. On a few of the tracks, he sounds a little more like Tom Petty than usual, but it's not hard to tell you're listening to Jerry Beckley. Kiss of Life is a slow, ethereal, melodic tune built around a big, airy synthesizer and features a backward guitar played by Hank Linderman. There are slow drums with a world music feel that sound good and also make it very much of its time. It's a track that would have been at home on the Like a Brother album, material for which Beckley, Lamb, and Wilson had apparently already started to work on when this was recorded. There's enough space in the mix to hear the various vocals pretty well. Most of the backing vocals seem to be Beckley. Robert Lamb and Carl Wilson are both in there, but generally mixed in quietly. I can hear Carl Best on the second chorus in the first line, Come on and save me, save me, and especially on the line, Now is the moment treasured. Even so, I really have to listen for him. It's too bad Beckley is a fine vocalist, and it's his album after all, but more from Lamb and especially from Carl would have been welcomed here. It's a nice track. As a Carl Wilson appearance, you can hear him there very, very fleetingly. Carl next comes up chronologically on Songs and Music from She's the One by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, released August 1st, 1996. Carl is credited with harmony vocals on the track Hung Up and Overdue. It's ostensibly the soundtrack for the romantic comedy She's the One, written, directed by, and starring Edward Burns, and co-starring Cameron Diaz and Jennifer Aniston. It sounds more like a Tom Petty album than a soundtrack. It's kind of ramshackle, but consists entirely of songs rather than the themes, made-to-order backgrounds, and incidental music that you expect from a movie soundtrack. Petty's prior album, Wildflowers, which we discussed a few minutes ago, had originally been conceived as a double album, and some of the tracks here are leftovers from the Wildflower sessions. Hung Up and Overdue is one of those tracks. In addition to Carl, the track also features Ringo Starr on drums. The drumming is very distinctively Ringo, and it's like they used the occasion for an all-out Beatles tribute with some touches very clearly lifted from I Am the Walrus and Strawberry Fields Forever. Carl might be harmonizing with Petty. There's clearly two voices, but without the harmony vocal credit, I think it was most likely Petty double-tracked. Where you can hear Carl most is in the coda after the Beatles-style false ending. You can hear him on some of the oohs and ahs while somebody, presumably Mike Campbell, plays a lead guitar in a dead-on impersonation of George Harrison. It doesn't last long, but this is the one spot where you can clearly hear Carl Wilson on a Tom Petty album. That's it for this week. I hope you'll join me next week when we'll wrap up our look at Carl Wilson guest appearances. Meanwhile, as always, I look forward to your comments and feedback. Please hit like if you don't mind. Subscribe if you haven't. Have a great week. Thanks again for watching. Bye.